Welcome everybody from some really far away places and further than far away places. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, I've invested a lot of thought in how to spend our time together. And a um, little just kind of some informal sharing, first of all. Uh, one of the topics that, when providing audiences with a list of topics that the audiences have liked top on the list is the topic, the art of meditation, overcoming negative emotions. They're less interest, I think, in the art of meditation and more interest in the overcoming negative emotions <laughs> part. And from doing that again and again, and again and again, and again and again, there's, there's certain very prominent themes that emerge that are certainly part of our bhakti process and it's certainly part of the message that counselors present when they're helping people that are struggling with negative emotions. Um, one of those, this Art of Meditation series is presenting four keys some of you have seen the presentation probably more than once. So one of those keys is the power of goals. And that has its place in the Hare Krishna movement. One, uh, one example of that, that I have direct experience hearing Srila Prabhupada say, and I repeat it many times because he said it many times. Once you have clearly identified a goal, then it's very easy to take steps to get there. And the converse is, if you haven't very clearly identified a goal, it's pretty hard to take steps to get there. But he was emphasizing the first part. And those of you that like hearing Prabhupada's recorded lectures, you've heard one of the phrases that he would like to repeat many times from Prahlad Maharaj, na te vidu svartaka timhi vishnu. Na te vidu. Vid it is the dato for knowing. Na. They do not know. Na te vidu. What they don't know? Sva arta gatim. Sva arta gatim. Their own self interest. They don't know. He, it means certainly Vishnu. Na te vidu svarta gatimi Vishnu. They don't know. And because they don't know, from Bhagavad Gita, their intelligence is many branched. And the objective by default, if you don't know, is you think you know. And then there's varieties of what people think they know, and it includes varieties of sense gratification. That is, you know, in the different language Prabhupada would say, fruitive activities, karma, that produces fruits, pala karma, or karma pala, and trying to be the enjoyer of the fruits of activities. So, primary lesson of Bhagavad Gita is, don't try to become the enjoyer of fruit of activities. But if you don't know the goal, then you're going to do that one. 
gross and subtle, try to be the enjoyer. And, and that's, um, that's, the, that's the root, the root of misery. And then you get negative emotions because you're trying to do that which is not possible or even if, you, even if the, the buzz is there, the sense object con, is contacted by the sense, real happiness isn't there and the duality feature of distress is also there, not real happiness and distress. Negative emotion. So, knowing the goal. So, I, I've um, my intention right at the beginning of this our time together is to um, help in a, help me, and then help you as part of a service that I like doing is becoming clear what is the goal and the little steps that we can take to, to get there. And one of the things about goals, here's an ISKCON example of goals. There's many, but you know, a practical one. Besides, you know, the goal of going back to Godhead. Something that's... Um, in a discussion just yesterday, I was in Detroit yesterday, So, someone was sharing, I struggle. And um, I don't like to struggle. And I don't, I don't mind struggling, but I'd like to know that there's an end to it. <laughs> they didn't say it like that, but that's what they were saying. And, you know, but sometimes I just miss. And I, because we were speaking with this Hridaya, Dor Balya message. Hridaya Dor Balya. Why Uttanapada didn't do what he knew he should do because he was too much attached to Suruchi. Hridaya Dor Balya. He had weakness of heart. So he neglected even giving affection to his son. He didn't say anything. Zippo. Want to speak of now Suruchi. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. <laughs> he said nothing. Because of Hridaya Dorbalya. So he was too much attached to enjoying the temporary over here. And so he neglected what real happiness is and real duty is because duties done in, in the mood of loving service. That's real happiness. So this question came, well, you know, for me to feel full, is my goal, I'm like this other Prabhu who's like sometimes and sometimes not and sometimes and sometimes not, you know, doing the right thing. So how can I consistently do the right thing and be in integrity with who I really am? I mean, that wasn't their language, but that was their question. Should I go for the, you know, feeling full? Said, go for the, the position of being in service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if you can do, if you can do that from your heart, you're going to feel full. So I was thinking about it some further. It's, it's practical. <laughs> She's a mother. I could have said A or B. My duty as a mother is to feel full, being a mother. And when I'm feeling full, being a mother, I can really serve my children nicely. And if I'm not feeling full, then I can mess around with sometimes and sometimes not. Or B, just serve, be, be, be a mother selflessly serve and you're going to feel full if you actually do that with the real mood of motherhood you're going to feel full so your business is to be 
in a mood of selfless service. With discrimination, of course, but selfless means not to me, but to the one who I'm serving. And sometimes you have to discipline or whatever, but selfless service. I think this mother would have understood that one. We're not, we're, so the, our goal is not bliss or when chanting, seek high peak experience. That's our goal. So somebody reminded me, somebody who was with us at this function last year, reminded me that I asked him to remind everybody of something that I spoke about last time we were together, which was, and I didn't, honestly, I don't remember. I just take this devotee's word for it. I made a request. It wasn't like an instruction. It was a request. Please consider between now and the next time we get together, make a conscientious effort to be in the mood of service to the name as you're chanting the name. Not something abstract and notional, but because we had spent a fair amount of time, and I'm going to spend some more time during our time together, the mood of service to the name, because it's so essential to our life in bhakti is in service to the name means in service to Krishna means in all the things that we do the mood of service to Krishna but the root is starts with the name we'll discuss it some more so this devotee reminded me that I said that I would ask at this event this year how did it go, Prabhu's? And my guess is, gosh, I completely forgot. So rather than ask the question and get that answer, I'm here to remind you. <laughs> and we'll spend some time on that topic once again, because it's so, it's really an essence message. And, I'm, and I, I, I wish to, to build on it. Um, again, anecdotal, but uh, Bori John Prabhu has been a very important person in my life. From the time I was in college, the first Krishna conscious literature I got was from him. And then his life went this way, my life went that way. And then he went to Vrindavan. He started the VAHE and I started going to Vrindavan because I, I am service-minded and I wanted to spend the Kartik month in Vrindavan and that gave me a perfect excuse to do it. I could teach at the Vrindavan Institute and do some service and be in Vrindavan during the Kartik month. It was fantastic. So I did it for a bunch of years. And one of the courses that I took was the, the fruit of, because when Burijan Prabhu does something, he does it really thoroughly. He spent something like seven years researching, interviewing people, going deeply into the topic of teaching. So that's dear to my heart, training and education. It's part of me. So I took his course. And to this day, I remember the main message in this course because for four weeks, every class, he repeated the same message. <laughs> and it's in his book. His book is this thick, but if you want to know the essence of a book that's this thick, it's here it is. For making a lesson plan, this is part of the art of teaching. have at the beginning, as you're preparing for the class, there's three words, explicit educational objective. And we went over and over it, backwards and sideways, up and down and inside and out and left and right and, okay, I got it. An explicit educational objective. So 
Do, 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 do. I have an explicit educational objective for our time together. Would you like to know what that is? Do, do, do. It's um, encouraging everyone that's here and pe even people that aren't here because of different circumstances. Some people are home with the flu and other some persons are off doing some of the other things. There's a lot of other things going on this weekend in ISKCON, North America. People are participating in other things, which is fine. Um, take some steps towards becoming a little more clear about what your goal of life is, your life mission. Because one of the slides in this overcoming negative emotion, art of meditation presentation is a slide that asks people to take a few minutes and reflect, look inside. Introspection is one of the items and power of goals is another. Those are two powers of the, two keys of this four. What's your mission in life? What, what is it that you would... What would you like to accomplish in this lifetime? Well, I'm too busy doing things to ask that question. But if you ask the question, it's good to ask the question. So I'm, I, there's a little form that we're going to circulate at the end of this evening's class and ask you to ask yourself that question. And then little steps that will help align the, the things that you do to that which you'd like to achieve in this life. You know, the, the bigger one, of course, is go back to Godhead. That's something I'd like to achieve in this life, but, you know, more, a little more, like, not so high, just within something that has to do with, say, your psychophysical nature. Something that, that you feel is, in the words of Viktor Frankl, it's another reference that I make a lot. Viktor Frankl is um, a man who wrote a book in 1946 called Man's Search for Meaning. Uh, he survived a Nazi concentration camp, Jewish man, and his profession was a psychiatrist. It's, it's a negative experience that we're most likely never going to have to endure in our lifetime, something so severe. He survived, and one of the things that he writes in the book that helped him survive was his absorption in not getting free from the circumstance which he had nothing, there was nothing he could do about it. But there was a mission in his words. Man needs a purpose awaiting for them to be fulfilled. So that's what his mission was. When I'm on the other side of this horrible experience, I want to be able to help people who are passing through a horrible experience. There's nothing they can do about the horrible experience, the circumstance and the emotion, how to get on the other side of it. So something that's waiting for you to be fulfilled, that, you know, not necessarily the go back to Godhead one, but, you know, something to do with a gift that Krishna has given you and how to develop that gift that Krishna has given you in such a way that it's an offering unto Krishna of that gift that Krishna has given you with love. And then there's little things. Um, again, a little sharing. Part of what inspired speaking on this topic, besides I think it's an important topic, one of the places I was visiting two young devotees came and said, can you talk about making a New Year's resolution? So 
So I said, there isn't, isn't going to be time for that. And it wasn't really fit the, 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 the topic that was being discussed. So I wanted to, it's not like exactly a New Year's resolution, it's a new decade, and there's lots of stuff out there where people are saying, you know, it's a new decade, and what's, what's the new decade going to look like? What does the old decade look like? So I'm, an explicit educational objective for this gathering is to help you look within and what's something that you'd like to accomplish? And what are some of the steps that you can take in this lifetime to accomplish, excuse me, in this, this year that you can take to help you accomplish that, that which is aligns with that waiting for you to be accomplished, whatever that is. And I specifically am going to speak about three things. And one of those three things is the topic for this evening. The holy name, um, Harikata, and giving bhakti to others. So it's, it's in this little handout, you'll see it. And then there's, a, there's another exercise, this application exercise sheet. And the... Um, the watermark on the background is an iceberg. So many of you have seen that image because maybe multiple times because it's one of the things that made a very strong impact on me. That is the iceberg of culture. And then there's the tip of the iceberg. Then what's below the surface of the water. And then there's the bottom of the iceberg. And it's called the iceberg of culture. You'll see it. You'll get it. You'll get a handout sheet tomorrow with that, with the, with the, the iceberg picture filled in. So that's what the, that's what's the watermark of this application exercise. Because when there's events like this, almost invariably, there's, you know, the wow experience and how do I stay in the wow position because my experience is afterwards, ooh, so how do I stay up in the wow position? Is, they don't they see it that way, but that's... The application. You take things that you've heard, this is how you make advancement in Krishna consciousness. Is that which you've heard, it goes in. And when it goes in, a demonstration that goes in is you live by it. That's the application. It doesn't have to be everything, but something. Little steps towards the objective. Because something went in and you ab abide by it. So you'll see. There's this handout will come at the end. And my expectation is, like life, some people will take it really seriously. Some people will apply it for a little while. And some people won't even remember where they put the paper. It's just, I, I, you know, I don't have any expectation other than that's what's going to happen. But my function, my, my wish, is to be a resource to help those that want to go the next step, to help you go the next step. And that's why all of this. And there's going to be another handout, which I'm not, per, deliberately not passing it out now because everyone's going to look and you won't pay attention. So remember this. Oh, here's the, here's the iceberg image. You're going to get one of these tonight. And on the flip side is this whole topic of from the heart. And that's the image. And, and from the heart, the text is Rupa Goswami's definition of bhakti and what's at the heart of bhakti there's things that are on the peripheral that but there's the heart of the heart of bhakti and that is the intent to please krishna and then there's other things that assist 
that or are meant to be aligned with that. So that, that these, these images that you'll receive is to assist you, assist you with the application exercise. And it's specifically worded, invitation. Come on in. <laughs> that kind of invitation. Okay, now uh, that's an overview of the time spent this weekend. And um, specific to goals, the power of goals. Oh, yeah. A, 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 an ISKCON example of this, some of you, many of you, know Vaisheshika Prabhu. He's the. He's many things, but he's a minister of book distribution in North America. So some years ago, right here in Chicago, there was a group of persons who came together and met to discuss North America stuff. And the topic came up of, wouldn't it be nice if all the leaders in North America, this that's one of the things going on this weekend is there's leaders of North America meeting presidents from many centers and GBCs and so forth. They're in Washington, D.C., conducting a leadership meeting. So some years ago, there was an idea, what do you think, Prabhu's power of goals? We establish a goal for all of North America to increase book distribution because that's a nice offering to Prabhupada. And fast forward over four years, five years, whatever it was, the book distribution, each year, some doable goal, and it works this way. As soon as you establish a goal and you mean it, you know what happens? The intelligence starts to move towards how to fulfill the goal. I'll say it again. It has to do with the bhakti process and ha knowing what your goal is. As soon as genuinely, sincerely, not cosmetically, you raise your hand and do nothing, but you, but, or you say, you say, cause it gets the A in the exam, but you don't really mean it, it's not in your heart. But if you say it, it's in your heart. Then the intelligence starts to work towards how to fulfill that goal. Bodhi, the dami, bodhi, yogam, tam, like that. Krishna gives intelligence. <clears throat> in th recent times, the book distribution in North America exceeded the peak book distribution during Prabhupada's time with the Radhadamadar bus parties and, you know, Prabhupada as the, the captain of the team saying, go team, go, and we were going. Full-time brahmacharis, lots of sacrifice, North America exceeded the BBT remittance from that period of time. Now, money was worth more then than now, worth less now than then. Nonetheless, power of goals. And, you know, a lot of celebration to meet the goal once we met the goal. So I'd like to see you all celebrate that you're making steps towards whatever it is that you would like in this lifetime to achieve. But you have to think about what you'd like to achieve. It's not notional or cosmetic. It's fundamental for the bhakti process, for, for life. Living your life with contentment and pr productivity. So, to achieve that which you establish as a goal, there's a small, not small, there's an equally large thing, and that is empowerment. To achieve the goal. You can't just run off and try to achieve a goal. And you're a failure if you don't, you're a success if you do, and 
That's, that's material consciousness. And spiritual consciousness is empowerment is required. That's this evening's topic. Krishna Shakti is required. So we're going to start with Rupa Goswami and um, those of you that are familiar with our Mangala Charana prayers, those are the prayers that we recite. Um, and we have functions with you know, yagya, yagya functions, or it's in the very beginning of the Bhagavad Gita with the Mangala Charana, it's in Bhagavad Gita. So if you know the verse, you can say it with me. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam Sapitam Yena Bhotale Svayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Translation When will Sri the Rupa Goswami Prabhupada who has established within this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya Give me shelter under his lotus feet. Dadati padanti come. When will he give me shelter of his lotus feet? And um, the mission to fulfill the desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam. Mano Bhishtam is the desire. Stapitam, he established. He established within this world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya. Now, to establish within this world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya required empowerment not just like he ran off and decided hey I think that's going to be a nice thing to do in this lifetime I'll try to establish stapitam yena bhutale in this world in this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya he uh, received empowerment from Lord Chaitanya to do that. We're going to spend some time hearing about the empowerment of Lord Chaitanya to Rupa Goswami and then pray to Rupa Goswami. Stapitam yena bhutade svaya rupa gadamayam dadati svapadanti to give us shelter under his lotus feet so we can get receive empowerment from him because he received the fullness of Lord Chaitanya's empowerment. in this world. So in this world, there's another statement of empowerment that's often quoted that applies to us, all of us in the room and anybody that knows of Lord Chaitanya because it's an instruction from Lord Chaitanya to everybody, which includes us. You're familiar with this. Yadi Deka Tari Kaha Krishna Upadesh Amar Agyai Guru Hana Tar Edesh. Instruct everyone to follow the order of Lord Sri Krishna as they are given in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in the land. Prabhupada liked to speak about that verse and passed it on to us as it was passed on to him. There's a specific empowerment to Rupa Goswami. There's this general empowerment to all of us or all followers of Lord Chaitanya. But Rupa Goswami was specifically empowered and we're going to hear just now how that took place um, in 
in the beginning, there, there's, it, there are two chapters. Shri Shri Kishore Kishori Ki. There are two chapters in Chaitanya Charitamrita that discuss um, Rupa Goswami, Lord Chaitanya's interactions and instructions to Rupa Goswami. And chapter 19 of Madhya Leela begins with a general statement by Krishna Das Kaviraj that I'll just read. This is the first verse of the chapter. The Lord, being anxious to revive the Vrindavan pastimes of Lord Krishna, impregnated the heart of Rupa Goswami with spiritual potency. By this potency, Srila Rupa Goswami could revive the activities of Krishna in Vrindavan, activities almost lost to memory in this way he spread Krishna consciousness throughout the world. So, have you ever thought about, I've thought a lot about, he stayed in Vrindavan. He didn't do what Prabhupada did, you know, travel around the world 12 times in an airplane. He stayed in Vrindavan. And so how was it he was establishing Krishna consciousness and spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world? Well, there's a time lapse, but go to Vrindavan today, and what was lost, the places of Krishna's pastimes are now known, and people from all over the world are going there. And it's, it's something like Srila Prabhupada's inherited vision from Bhakti Vinod Thakur to Bhakti Siddhanta to him to us to establish the Temple of Vedic Planetarium, and part of the vision Part of the vision was that people from all over the world would come to check out this planetarium, and when they checked out the planetarium, they'd find out about who was Lord Chaitanya and get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Kirtan and become spiritually infected, like there's a flu going around. Some persons aren't here because they have the flu. There's a flu going around, so, you know, be careful if you have to cough, cover your mouth and all those things. So um, that's, you know, infection with a flu or a germ or something. And there's a spiritual infection and the intention of what Prabhupada wanted to do, which is what Bhakti Siddhanta wanted to do, which is Bhakti Vinod Thakur wanted to do, which is described in Ananta Samhita, that there, a day will come when it's, this temple will rise and people from all over the world will come. But Prabhupada had specific focus on planetarium because the connection of the view of modern people with empiric science and trashing the Vedas because it's sentimental and, you know, just mythology. So this mythology text is showing the structure of the universe with numbers. And anyway, so, so people will take an interest in, wow, it's not just mythology, etc., etc., etc. So it's, that's a gift that Prabhupada did in giving us the opportunity to do, to assist him. And Chaitanya and Rupa Goswami established places of, lost places of Krishna's pastimes, as did Lord Chaitanya himself, starting with Radha Kund and then Rupa Goswami, and then here we are today with people from all over the world going to Vrindavan and finding out about Krishna. So in that chapter, there's a few other references. By entering the heart of Rupa Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered him to ascertain properly the conclusion of all truths. Now, we discussed this during the winter retreat. But that's, hearing it again is no problem. Would you like to be able to understand properly the conclusion of all truths? All truths? That's not possible 
other than by empowerment. It's not by intellectual acumen. Not possible. But by empowerment it's possible. And Rupa Goswami was given that empowerment. Not only that, he made him an experienced devotee whose decisions correctly agree with the verdict of the disciplic succession. Thus, Srila Rupa Goswami was personally empowered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and empowered to write it, expand it, explain it to us, people that know nothing about nothing or think we know something about everything, but to give to us. So to be at the feet of Rupa Goswami asking for some of his mercy is a good place to be. Descending mercy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu expanded his mercy, another verse, to Sri Lurpa Goswami just so he could render service by writing transcendental literatures. Explicit. He was empowered in these ways. And so we are followers of Lord Chaitanya known by the name Rupanugas or followers of Rupa Goswami asking for some empowerment that some portion of what he received the fullness of from Lord Chaitanya. Because of time, I'm not going to go into the detail. I've spoken about it a number of times, but there, twice Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirmed that he invested the fullness of his mercy in the heart of Rupa Goswami. He had a big heart because he had the fullness, fullness of his mercy is a lot of mercy. It's unlimited mercy. So one of those well, there, the, the two situations were that the writing, Rupa Goswami's writing a verse that was in Sanskrit mirroring the verse that Lord Chaitanya would say over and over again during Kirtan and no one understood it, but Rupa Goswami understood it. He wrote the companion verse on a leaf, stuck the leaf in the thatched roof, went to take his bath. Lord Chaitanya came to see him didn't see him because he was taking his bath, but saw the verse and read the verse and was astounded that Rupa Goswami has understood my mind. Who can understand my mind? So he asked Rupa Damodar, how can he understand my mind? And Rupa Damodar said, I can understand that you gave his mer your mercy to him because otherwise he can't understand your mind. And then, Rupa, then Lord Chaitanya said, it's true. I saw him to be a fit candidate, and so I gave him the fullness of my mercy so he could understand the truths of transcendence. And then he requested Srubdhamadar, you also instruct him on the science of rasa. So that's what Rupa Goswami wrote, especially Bhakti Rasa. Amrita Sindhu, Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu. Uh, by the empowerment of Lord Chaitanya and the power of Lord Chaitanya to empower others to empower him, to instruct him so that he could understand the reality of all truths and then explain it. Then another incident where Lord Chaitanya publicly confirmed was the reading of Rupa Goswami's drama, Vidagta Madhava, Lalita Madhava, and there again Lord Chaitanya confirmed. I gave him my full potency to understand all these things. Now there's, there's other incidences. Ramananda Roy was empowered. Others were empowered, certainly. But to do anything in the spiritual arena, we require empowerment. We require Krishna Shakti, Vina Nahe Tara Pravartana is, um, I'll tell a little Prabhupada story.
Once upon a time, <clears throat> there was no Hare Krishna movement. Some time passed and then the Hare Krishna movement was established. And Prabhupada's main mission in establishing the Hare Krishna movement was the order of his spiritual master, which was in the Western countries. The teachings of Lord Chaitanya should be heard and understood. And after that became somewhat established, Prabhupada began taking what he called the World Sankirtan Party, that was leading devotees from each center were to be sacrificed to go with Prabhupada and travel around the world and establish Krishna consciousness around the world. And the first place they went was India. And where before he was unable to do anything, with his white elephants, people took, it, took notice and take, took interest in the Hare Krishna movement because it was the Western people who they were chasing after were coming back and tell them, telling them Krishna Bhakti and, and Sankirtan. And I'm trying to remember why I'm telling you this story. It slipped my mind. Huh? No. It'll come back. I'll, I'll. away. What's that? Yes, I know the topic is empowerment. And the Sankirt, World Sankirtan Party. Yeah, it, it, it went away. It'll come back. Oh, no, remember. No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, Tell another Prabhupada story that is coming to mind. And maybe I'll remember the other one later. Uh, the, the, the words of the spiritual master are sufficient, just like this instruction of Lord Chaitanya, take the teachings of Krishna as found in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and give it to others and in this way become guru and save the land. That's an instruction. Here's another one in Bhagavad Gita from Krishna's instruction in Bhagavad Gita from whatever and wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature, bring it back under the control of the self. That's an instruction, and the power to do it is within the instruction. It doesn't mean, okay, the instruction is there, and now my mind doesn't wander anymore. But, you know, the, the bringing of the mind back is a requirement. Bringing the mind back is a requirement, and the power to do it, although the mind wanders and keeps wandering and wandering and distracted and so forth, the principle, the empowerment is there within the instruction to do it. The instruction of Lord Chaitanya is take this message and deliver it all over the world. All over the world. 
we're not, we, we, we don't, I'm a sannyasi and I travel a lot, but I can't even go all over the world. But, and, and most of the rest of the persons assembled here are not sannyasis. So, the, you know, how can you go all over the world? Well, you do like Rupa Goswami did. You establish Krishna consciousness where you are. And by doing that in a strong manner, it becomes exemplary Um, gives strength to others that are not with us in this room. Maybe they're somewhere else, not in this room. Maybe they're in this city or there's devotees from other cities. And you, you practice Krishna consciousness in that place where you are. And it's going to have an all over the world impact because people move around. I travel and I just, you know, in the past week, I met five people who I didn't remember, but, but they remembered me from years ago, and my association with them helped them become a devotee. I was in the Potomac Temple this past Sunday, and Braj Bihari was there as uh, the MC introducing, because his wife went off with Gauravani because they were doing some things with the kids, like music class for the kids. Fun time with Gauravani. So Prajvihari was doing the MC work, introducing me. And he said, I'm here today because of Ramapad Swami. And he, and he reminded me of something that I had forgotten. He was in college, Ann Arbor, University of Michigan. There's some persons from that area in our assembly today. And during the summer, he had a summer job. And the summer job was as an apprentice at a law firm. And a person who worked at the law firm, he didn't give the name, but I know the name, Bernie DeAngelis. You know, nice Italian name. And Bernie and I had a relationship because he would come to the New York temple and I would help him go the next steps in Krishna consciousness. So while Braj Bihari was apprenticing at the law firm, Bernie infected him with Krishna Bhakti. And so when he went back to school, he met Bhadri Swami, who was running a program at the University of Michigan, and he became a devotee. And so he was saying, because, because of him, I'm here today. Because he was looking after somebody over there who helped me, gave me the seed of Bhakti, and, you know, and how much service has Braj Bihari done in his lifetime? So who knows? Who can say? We just, so wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever your Prabhudatta Desh is, you receive and you give. And it requires empowerment to do so, but you do so under the order of Lord Chaitanya to do so. It's not like, okay, I'm going to go out and rescue the world. or even one soul. It's empowerment, it's an instruction and acting as an instrument. That's how it works. Without, sit negatively, without empowerment, oh, now I remember the story. <laughs> there was once upon a time, there wasn't a Hare Krishna movement and then went, there. so then Prabhupada wanted a center in Mayapur. This is the Prabhupada story that I was forgetting. So, it took a while. He wanted a place in Mayapur. He had this vision of the TOVP way back before there was even the property. He sent, you know, Mission Impossible Man, Tamal Krishnamaraj, who got the land. And then, um, so then there was, you know, a little Hare Krishna temple. Now it's not just a little Hare Krishna temple, but he, so a little Hare Krishna temple on that land. And some of you know Yasomati Nandan Prabhu. Some of you don't know Yasomati Nandan Prabhu, but he, he is an um, Indian devotee, Gujarati devotee that was educated in America. He got introduced to Krishna consciousness at a university in America. He went back to India and became a temple president in Ahmedabad. And before there was a temple, he became the, the founding person. 
And then he was visiting in Mayapur at our Mayapur festival. And Yasumati Nandan told me this story three times. He went to visit Madhav Maharaj. Madhav Maharaj had a mat or a temple right next to ours. And so he was a nice sadhu and Yasa went to speak with him. He had some relationship with him. And <clears throat> Madhav Maharaj made a, an offense to Prabhupada. He said, your Swamiji was so successful because he was a good businessman. We're just sadhus, we don't know how to do all these things. But he was good, he, he became successful because he was a businessman. And those of you that know Yasamati Nandan, know what it's like, he became fire. And he knows the scripture. So he said, what kind of, what are you saying? Have you not read Chaitanya Charitamrita? Do you not know that one cannot spread Krishna consciousness without the direct empowerment of Lord Chaitanya? He you know, chastised him. This is an elder sadhu, you know, a god brother of Srila Prabhupada. And he let him have it. And he went back and informed Srila Prabhupada what the exchange was. And Prabhupada was very appreciative of Yasso's speaking the way that he spoke on the philosophical point that he spoke. And from that point on, Prabhupada was very wary of our members mixing with Gaudiya Math leaders. There's a history, Prabhu, of that kind of thing that was even during Prabhupada's time. And it happened even after Prabhupada's time. It's, it's, it's respect where respect is due and don't mix intimately because there was undermining, explicit undermining of faith in the spiritual master. That's a no-no. That's a spiritual no-no. And Madhav Maharaj did this time. Now, he's not with us anymore. I'm speaking because it's, it's for the purpose of your own protection to, to, to narrate the story. And uh, because it takes Krishna, how is it that Prabhupada did what he did? Not just he wrote a lot and traveled a lot and did a lot and used technology. He was specifically empowered in unique way in the history of religion of the world. We can attribute this and that and the other thing and an alignment of this and that and the other thing. But Krishna Shakti alone is that force. And then he aligned whatever the resources are. That, and that's what we're to do also. We're to, to understand what, what is the sending mercy that's coming our way. Have your receiver on and receive it and let it enter your heart and be guided by that as you go forward step by step. Because, um, because of the time I've spent, I'm just, just about to end. Because of the time I spent um, in the month of October with Ramayana, specifically two and a half khandas of Ramayana, Aranya Kanda and Kishkinda Kanda and the beginning parts of Sundara Kanda, it's, it's with me, it's, it's a fresh topic that um, I want to go into further. By the way, uh, the, the topic for the next um, Gita Nagari seminar or retreat or whatever is Lessons from Ramayana. Nityananda Pran hopefully will be well by then. He's not well today. 
and Lal Gopal have both committed to come and they both love Ramayana. They're going to plan the whole thing out. And I'm going to speak about the personalities of Ramayana. And <clears throat> that's Memorial Day weekend. During the, the national holiday, you know I go to China. So <clears throat> this past national, national holiday is like our 4th of July. You know, their Independence Day, they just celebrated the 70th year of Mao doing what Mao did and became the China's Pe People's Republic of China. And so it's a big deal. National holiday is a big deal. So people don't work for seven days. It's really a great time to have a seminar. So I was with the GBC, one of the GBCs of China for this past national holiday. And I explained to him what I was going to be doing. So we came up, he made this suggestion. So that's what we're going to be doing. Personalities of Ramayana, 12 different classes, an hour and a half, two hours each. And over here is juxtaposing personalities in Chinese culture, history or literature or whatever, that resemble or mirror the character and quality of what some of the Ramayana personalities. Because people in China relate to their China tradition, very much so, and they're encouraged to do so. So it, it helps them get it to, you know, so I'm, I'm taking this, this theme and going further with it because it's, it's, it's Krishna Kata or Hari Kata. And uh, during the conversation with Hanuman, Ram specifically empowers him as his guru representative. There was evaluation beforehand, there was several things beforehand, but the explicit statement that you will be successful, and the mission was very simple, find Sita and report back so we can then decide what the next step should be. That was his mission. And he stayed focused on the mission and he was empowered by Ram to fulfill the mission. And not only he was given the ring of Ram, but when Sita wasn't really sure, there's this wonderful section when he meets Sita in the Ashok Grove, 99 verses of just describing the features of Ram. Sita heart melted. Not only she knew that he knew, but hearing the description of Ram's features, her heart melted. So he was, he, was in, he was empowered. And the empowerment was just Lord Chaitanya, excuse me, Ra, Lord Ramachandra saying, I am confident you will be successful in finding Sita. So, uh, my dear devotees, feel yourselves empowered. Lord Chaitanya said, accept it. You're empowered. And here's one more, and I'm going to end with this. Uh, summer, Radhagovinda Mandir, 1974 or something like that, July. Prabhupada speaking in the, on the Vyasasan in the temple room, saying very humble expression, my spiritual master found me in some dark place. And he gave me his mercy. He picked me up and gave me mercy and instructed me, I have given my mercy to you. You go forward and give your mercy to others and the drums and 
Haribol, Prabhupada, Gita. So then Prabhupada said, so, and then, so I have come. And I've found you all in some dark place. And I've, following the order of my spiritual master, I've come to give you the mercy of Krishna. And here you are. Jai, Prabhupada. And then he said, and so now I instructing all of you, and he looked around the room, I'm instructing all of you, you go forward, receive this mercy of Lord Chaitanya, and you give that mercy to others. That's it. That's those words, that's the empowerment. So, Prabhu's, as Prabhupada gave us empowerment to do what he wanted, you please go forward and that which you have received, you give to others as well. And that's all it takes. That's, that's, that's the, 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 the po Krishna gives the power of attorney to his devotee to give him. This is the teaching of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in Madhurya Kandambani. Krishna receives his, preserves his neutrality. Samoham sarva bhuteshu name dveshtosti na priyaha. But he gives empowerment to his devotee. You go find others. Go find Sita. Go find the soul that has strayed from the shelter of the personality of Godhead and remind them of the shelter of the personality of Godhead and according to the capacity that you have, give them resources that help can restore their relationship with Krishna, which they have forgotten. So, um, that's in this document that you're going to get, at, you know, when you walk out the door or they're, they're all printed up. And I, you know, I'd like you to hold on to it. Don't put it away somewhere or you forget where you put it. T spend some time with this and see about making some kinds of steps in the direction of. And it can even be stuff that you're already doing, just do more um, from the heart with the intention of whatever it is that you're now doing, because time management is, you know, something that's important for devotees. So with the time that you now are investing, do more f with the intention of pleasing Krishna in a qualitative way increase, or a quantitative way increase, or some way increase. Make a step in the direction of fulfilling that instruction that Prabhupada said he received from Bhakti Siddhanta, etc. And then he passed on to us, and I'm passing on to all of you. It's Lord Chaitanya's mercy. Receive it and consider how to nurture it, grow it, and make a little plan how you're going to make a step in that direction. The name, Harikata, that's, you know, studying Prabhupada's books and discussing topics about Krishna with other devotees and giving bhakti to others. Any discussion? Different kind of presentation this evening. Go ahead. Guru Manj, you, you um, spent a lot of time with the goal of using our psychophysical nature in service to Sri Prabhupada's movement. And uh, my question is related to the first, it's not that they're disconnected, uh, but related to what you've sort of said earlier was is the higher goal of going back to Godhead. Uh, when I look back in my life in Krishna consciousness, uh, it, it seems that, that while the goal of going back 
to Godhead was notional before, it becomes a little more clear as we go along life. Uh, the question is how much should we perhaps contemplate that higher goal while also preparing for this, uh, for this life? In one word, alignment. Aligned with that higher goal. How far away it is, is one thing. But it's a goal, and align with that goal. In the little things that you do, in the intermediate things that you do, the longer term things you do, should be in alignment with the ultimate one. And you, you check yourself in, with honesty and integrity and so forth. Now, there's, there's another exercise here that's on this paper, you'll see, that touches on what you're saying, and it just takes it down to values. But values should also align. If, you know, if, you're, if you're thoughtful, it's values that align with the ultimate goal. Now, we, we're not starting there. That, that's, you know, conditioned souls don't start there. So there has to be some ongoing refinement, realignment, seeking clarity, readjusting, and so forth and so on. All of that must be an ongoing effort. And even as you were speaking, what that goal is becomes more clear as you go along. But, you know, the answer to your question, short answer is yes. Consider the thing that you're doing 2020 towards becoming what your psychophysical nature has the capacity to do, align that with the ultimate goal. Because wherever, whatever that is, that gift that is that you've been given came from some source and align the, the, the offering to, with that source. That's bhakti. And the more you're thinking like that, the more bhakti grows. The, the intention to please Krishna with everything that you do becomes more prominent. The bhakti vibrancy in your life becomes more prominent. Including your chanting and everything. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Um, you know, I didn't realize that we could call on empowerment, like, like call it from Krishna and, and take it and use it as, from what you said, I'm, I'm understanding it like, you know, empowerment comes down the system like the parampara system yeah. of everything else. So exactly. I, I didn't realize that. But I'm happy I got it now. Oh, but then I, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, say, you know, you're doing your seva or whatever and, you know, you're not feeling very empowered and then maybe people come by you and those people, like, empower you for what you're doing. Is that, is that the Krishna um, Shakti? Well, is, is it, is, is Krishna... Different. Does Krishna use people as tools to empower you, not just your guru? Well, they, they can be instruments, but not exactly, you know, empowerers. Okay. You know, reminders of what you have forgotten, yes, but not exactly in the same way of the descending, descending disciplic succession empowerment. Krishna specifically gives to his Madhyama Bhakta the power to give himself to others. So if I wanted to tap into this Krishna Shakti, how, how do I tap in? Do I just do Read some Prabh prayers to start you? Start with reading Prabhupada's books and, and chanting with the mood of being in service to the name. We'll speak so, some more about that tomorrow. Okay. So like maybe... That's how you tap into it. Okay. So like chanting the Shishastakam prayers maybe and like getting in the mood... Chanting the Shishastakam prayers, maybe, and getting sure, in the mood? Sure, sure. But it, 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 
That's the behavior, and then there's the consciousness behind the behavior. So okay. I'm, I'm focusing not, don't worry about the behavior, but f- focus on the consciousness behind the behavior. Mm. Lord Chaitanya is giving something. Mm. And get your, turn your receiver on. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Behind you. Marsh, a couple of questions here. Um, one, uh, on the topic of goal, uh, how do we sharpen the idea of what the goal is? Like, I think I'm beginning to see some gifts that I have in my nature, and I'm in a happy place doing what I'm doing right now. Uh, but the larger aspect of what do I do with the gifts uh, is very fuzzy for me at the moment. That's okay. The, the fuzzy can become sharper as the gift becomes more focused. The gift and the enhancement of the gift. Let's say it differently. Supposing you had a really sharp, clear, focused idea of how you're going to use that thing. As time passes, my experience is the picture of how you're going to use that thing changes by time and circumstance and and Krishna's arrangements. How you're going to use that thing changes, and that's just fine. So... Be fluid. Someone was asking how you say that in Spanish. <laughs> be fluid. But, you know, so it, that, that it's not clear and you want it to be clear, that's good. Both that it's not clear, that you know that it's not clear and you want it to become clear, all of that's good. Be patient and, you know, and keep asking. And let the clarity evolve while you're doing what you're doing. Does it make sense? You're not so comfortable with it, but it makes yes, sense. Yes, I was just going to say that I'm uncomfortable being in that fuzzy spot. That's good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's one of the topics we've been speaking about. Liminal space. You've heard that yeah. term? It's uncomfortable. That's good. Learn to embrace it. Because it means you're going somewhere. You're going from comfortable to someplace. In between, it's uncomfortable. That's good. Love it. Embrace it. It's yummy. (laughs) Because you're going somewhere. But you're not really clear exactly where yet. And that's uncomfortable. Well, you know, the, the longer... So, let's just say, what's it like to go back to Godhead? What do we know what it's like to go back to God? We can read, and then you can, and through reading, you'll get like a picture, but the feeling, you don't know what that feeling of being with Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan, doing whatever it is that your spiritual form is inclined to do. You don't know what that is. Wanting to know, that's good. Not knowing, that's just fine too. So, in between, we have our, so, you know, Jumuna Jivana's question, we have our psychophysical nature. You have yours. And you have some clear, you know, I feel energized by these things. Exactly how it's going to play itself out. That's in Krishna's hand. But I trust in Krishna. Krishna is taking care of you and you're taking care of those who are entrusted by Krishna to look after. So keep going and, and, and keep asking and even including, not just so the discomfort will go away. Not, that's, we're going to hear about that one tomorrow. Not for that reason but so that Krishna will be pleased. (laughs) 
When the child demands attention, you got to pay attention. Okay. Um, Mars, can I ask one more? Yes, yeah, What sure. are the, the four keys that you mentioned? The which which four things? The four keys. Yeah. Uh, the start of the class. One was goal setting. Power of goals. Power of acceptance. Okay. Power of association. I forget the other one. Jumana Jiva, what's the other one? Huh? You, you say. Power of introspection. Power of introspection, okay. He'll give you the whole presentation. Ask him. Acceptance, goals, acceptance, introspection. Goals, acceptance, introspection, and moving forward. Moving forward. I said association is an element of moving forward. Moving forward. Anyone else? Yes, Uma. Thank you so much. Um, what can one do when they find that their goals are being inhibited by those around them, specifically even family members? Is it okay to distance ourselves from family members if we find that there is some friction in the relationships which is thus preventing advancement toward achieving the goals? Yeah, it depends, but yeah. Are there circumstances? Yeah. Um, When, when one does that, <clears throat> it's important that you, uh, it, you exhibit the, the, the character and quality of an exemplary, as much as you can, an exemplary Vaishnav, in terms of your, not only the interaction with the family members, but your your just demeanor and disposition in general. You model uh, a, a contented, happy, lights on Hare Krishna devotee. You model it. And that has a, a, a dr dramatic impact on the heart and the mind of others, including family members. So be happy, be contented, be respectful, be, you know, be, exhibit the qualities and character of a, of a Krishna conscious person. And, um, you know, being respectful that, you know, their values may not be the same as yours and all of that, that's fine. Um, but you adhere to your values be true to your values and be happy and that has a, that has a very positive impact over a period of time now it can have a pushback also it can be resentment you're not supposed to be happy but you know if it's it's a loving family member then they'll, they'll they're happy that you're happy they're they're happy they're, they're, they're seeing wow this is their character is becoming effulgent and wonderful and delightful and whatever it is that he or she is doing, um, it's good. I don't necessarily want to do it the way that they're doing it, but I like this, I like the result. They're good and they're happy and they're productive and they're warm, etc. Now, that's easier said than done, but that's a principle. And in that way, your achar is more compelling than your prachar. Your character and conduct is more compelling than anything you might say to persuade them, well, it's actually a good, it's actually good. Show, show them that it's good. 
way back in the corner and that's going to be it for this evening. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, it's a basic question. I want to understand how do you set goals which are in alignment with Krishna consciousness and how that how those goals look like like if some examples you could share with me. Well, this sounds like we need a seminar on how to set goals. Would you like a seminar on how to set goals? Because I don't think I can do it in three minutes. Your question requires a more comprehensive response than a three minute answer. Uh, of course, Maharaj, uh, I would love to uh, hear the whole seminar also. Just a preliminary, if you could just give me a pointer, because I really struggle with it. I hear so much about setting goals, but I'm never satisfied, like I'm really setting some proper Krishna conscious goals, and I'm really taking some steps toward them that would really be like satisfying to my heart. You're asking the same question again, and I, my answer is the same answer. Sure, Maharaj. It, it, it's not a three-minute response. It's more of a process than it is um, yeah, a technique. And I recommend to you that when we pass these out, there's the, it's, you know, application exercise one and two. Focus on number one. Because number two talks about goals, and number one talks about values. And ask your mentor how to go about this. And she'll guide you. And it will help you get to exercise two, which is establishing goals. She's satisfied. Look at that. Thank you. I'm used to people saying, but. And... Okay. Srila Prabhupada, the key. To... Now, there's two boxes one that has the iceberg image, and another that has the heart and the iceberg image on the back. And what's the best way to do this? Could we have a, a lady volunteer to take some copies? <laughs>